Alright everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video, Fat Phil, and today we have eight, eight, right, that's eight, underrated Relic 8s you could equip in Galaxy of Heroes. So go ahead, like and subscribe, comment down below, let me know your thoughts, let's get our introduction here and let's get right into the video. Alright guys, so... To explain a little bit of what I mean by an underrated Relic 8, you first need to understand the way that I view Relic 8s. Number one, any of your Relic 8s need to go to requirements first. I know for a lot of you, that is not what you want to hear. That, no, get your Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, take him to Relic 9 right away. Like, I am not that kind of player. I did not have a single Relicate Galactic Legend until I had everything that required a Relicate done in Galaxy of Heroes. It's just the way I am. I would much rather have those to use for requirements than on GLs. So this entire list is not things you should even, that you should do now. It's not things you should do before some of your Galactic Legends. But they're ones that as you get through some of those initial Relicates, right? You went through, you did the GLs that I feel matter the most for Relicate. Maybe you did some of your Rise of the Empire operations. These would be some good characters to take. So let's start with Ben Solo. This one's a bit interesting to me, but I feel a lot of players get Ben Solo. They take him to Relic 5 and they're like, okay, that's good. I equip the Omicron on Force Dyad. I don't need to worry about him. He's going to help Ray. Ben Solo, as he gains Relic levels, helps Ray in a different way. Yes, Force Dyad makes it so certain characters can't beat him, beat Ray, makes the battle a little bit harder. But as you increase your relic levels on Ben, he becomes a threat himself. See, everybody loves to talk about how big of a threat Ray is, but if you can make Ben Solo a threat, oh my gosh, it's absurd, right? And here's the big thing: Relicate is the biggest jump in mastery. For those of you who don't know, and again, Mastery, I need to do a whole guide on it at some point. Like, I, there's other creators who've done it, but I need to make one just for the Fat Phil channel. But the biggest jump in Mastery that you get is from Relic 7 to Relic 8. Even when you go look at Ray, when you go from Relic 8 to Relic 9, you're only going up 10 in Mastery. But when you're going up from 7 to 8, you get 15. You don't get that anywhere else. And Mastery, just real quick, is these stats right here. So for Ben Solo, accuracy, critical chance, and damage. That's his mastery. The big reason why I bring up mastery is that Rey gives out 40% mastery as part of her lead to light side allies. So Ben, with 40 mastery at Relic 8, gets really high numbers, which means that his offense, right, which is damage, right, his damage, accuracy, critical chance are all going to skyrocket, makes him a lot more challenging to beat can really mess up a lot of those off meta counters that you're going to try because Ben Solo's actually putting out damage. So to me, it's very underrated Relicate. Sticking along with Galactic Legend trend here, we've got Kersantan next. I, I was shocked to see that there were more Coors Light Leia Relicates than there were Kersantans. Kersantan is the first Hut Cartel character you Relicate. And yes, you heard that properly. You do not take Jabba to Relicate before you take Kersantan. Before you even get into, oh, mastery, whatever else, just read this part of Jabba's kit. This paragraph right here. At the start of battle, other Hut Cartel allies gain a stack of my kind of scum for each bounty hunter, Hut Cartel, and smuggler ally until the end of battle, which all that garbage. Jabba the Hut is immune to taunt effects and can't be targeted during enemy turns while an ally with my kind of scum is present. So, you think about that. You take Kersantan to Relic 8. You make him good. You make him thick. You, make, you give him all the extra stats that he's going to get. That juicy mastery which increases armor, health steal, and protection for him. And now, he's sticking around longer in that fight. Now, your Kersantan is going to keep that my kind of scum longer, meaning you can't target Jabba. And all of you are going to sit there and say, oh yeah, well, I'll just force leap Kersantan with Commander Tano and that won't be a problem. I have... Please go do that. I want you to force leap Kersantan. Because that means that Leia and Lando and Embo 
are all going to sit there turtling behind the Chrysanthemum that you just force leaped. And now your damage is still going to be nerfed because, hey, guess what? Chrysanthemum's probably coming back. He's going to get his taunt back up. So, yeah, you go hit your high ground, but by then you've got thermal detonators all over you and Coors Light Lay is detonating them. By making Chrysanthemum Relic 8, you're putting a lot more attention on him because you can't ignore him because it takes so long to get through a Relic 8 Chrysanthemum. So I'm a big fan of it. I think he should be the first one, especially because with his Grand Arena Omicron, he gets additional max protection, which he gains from his mastery. So yeah, Chrysanthemum, a, a great Relic 8 in my opinion, a really solid option. Sticking along with the tanks, the Meat Shields and their Galactic Legend, give me Royal Guard with Lord Vader. I was appalled at how few Relic 7, Relic 8, and 9 Royal Guards there were, and how many Relic 8 and Relic 9 Lord Vaders there are. And as you guys will notice on this list, I don't have a single one of these characters at Relic 8 yet, because they're underrated, but like, I'm still not through some of the ones that I may need for other things, but like, these guys are right on the plate. Like, I've, I've hovered, the amount of times I've hovered over this Relic 8 is absurd for both of these two characters. Again, another guy who's going to be gaining additional health and protection, right? Same thing as Chrysanthemum. The big thing with Royal Guard is a lot of the off-meta counters to Lord Vader are reliant, or I want to say off-meta counters, but a lot of those counters to Lord Vader are reliant on you getting through Royal Guard. The longer Royal Guard sticks around, the harder that battle becomes. So everybody's going to say, oh, I just want to, you know, annihilate him with Mando. Do you know how much easier it is for my Lord Vader to win if you go and you annihilate Royal Guard and you leave Maul and you leave Thrawn or Darth Vader or Ninth Sister? The Royal Guard, by making him those higher Relic levels, again, attracts attention away from everybody else. When you have a Relic 3 Royal Guard, I don't even bother. I'm not going to annihilate him. I'm not going to, like execute him i'm taking out somebody else because it, it, he's not he's not a threat anymore these guys both of them i should have said this like like put them both together they both become a threat because they get so thick that you have to use those instant kills on them and then that opens up the rest of your team that allows the rest of your team to get their plays out so these are two very underrated relegate characters characters who i think get passed over in favor of a Jedi Knight Luke or somebody else that, frankly, while a good Relic 8 does not offer the same benefit that these guys do. Next is CLS. So, when I watch a lot, when I look a lot, look at a lot of Commander Luke Skywalker teams, a common trend I notice is everybody's got their Relic 8 on Han, and I often see a lot of Relic 8 Chewies, and then Relic 7 Commander Luke, Relic 7 3PO and Chewie. I just don't understand that because CLS shares his stats through Chupio's unique. Right in here, Chupio is going to gain 40% of the max health, protection, offense, defense, potency, tenacity. Everybody else gains half that amount. So if I go into Luke and I make him Relic 8, now he's got more health, critical damage, which doesn't really help, but the armor, the damage, right? All of these things make the rest of the team better. Everybody else is going to benefit from Commander Luke's Relic 8. There's not a lot of characters who can say that, right? There's not a lot of characters who get to say that their Relic 8 literally makes the entire team stronger, but Commander Luke's does. So you absolutely want to make sure that Commander Luke is that first Relic 8 after Han on that Commander Luke Skywalker team because he will juice those stats. And when you get into 3v3 situations... A Relic 8 CLS can be a lot scarier to take out. You'd be surprised. All right, General Grievous is next. I feel like this should be self-explanatory. The dude literally deals damage based on his max health. It's in every single one of his kits based on max health. Based on max health. Grievous gains max health from Relic 8. Now, of course, the caveat here being, oh yeah, Phil, but he doesn't gain that much. He's a better Relic 9. Hey, you said it, not me. But... The other one of the stats here that I think really kind of slides under the radar for him is the critical chance and critical damage. General Grievous, because it's based on his max health, he's going to have this massive max health pool. 
but critical damage and critical chance are two really good stats for him to make sure that the damage he's putting out is as high as possible. And both of those happen to be stats in his mastery. So again, as he gets to Relic 8, those numbers go up. He's got more critical damage, more critical chance. He's got more health. He just turns into this monster. He's also got a great ship, right? The Malevolence. I don't remember. I can't remember if the Vulture Droids scale to his Relic level, how they work. I can't remember. But what I will tell you is that even his AoE, this AoE ability here, being able to have that at Relic 8 is really good. It's a lot more powerful and you will notice a change. Like you absolutely will. Um, so I'm a big fan of his Relic 8. I think that especially with the coming raid, he's one that a lot of players may look to. Hopefully this is a seamless transition. I had to stop the video. We're coming back to edit it. So let's see how this works. But shouldn't have to explain that Jedi Knight Anakin is a great Relic 8. But let's just talk about this character a little bit. Before like Keller and Beck came into the game, Anakin didn't really have a home outside of Qui-Gon Jinn. Jedi Master Kenobi came in and just like the movie, stole his wife, stole his Padawan. Can't really blame him for going to the dark side, getting, going up, you know, growing up to like six foot six, going all, all black. Like dude's just trying to get his wife back, man. Come on now. Oh, God, that's so bad. But, um, you know, he didn't really have a place. And so his Relic 8 didn't make a ton of sense because outside of Qui-Gon Jinn, you know, his ship was nice, but it wasn't really worth the Relic 8. Now with Keller and Beck, you're going to see Anakin get used in a lot more teams. I'd say outside of GAC even, Keller and Beck, a far superior team for Anakin. Um, like, and going to be really good in, you know, Conquest, you know, TB, stuff like that. I could see this being a really good team. And the reason why Anakin really would like that Relic 8 is, again, he's got that ship, you know, increases the speed. But for him, where I think it comes down to is he's gaining a bunch of really good stats. The armor penetration, accuracy is nice, health, the armor. And the reason why I bring up like the armor and the, you know, armor penetration is that one of the big things you think with him is that, you know, he's a high priority target a lot of times. Because if you trigger those, you know, characters going under that, you know, health threshold, he takes all those turns, starts, you know, whacking people left and right, treating them like they're Tuscans. Like it goes south pretty quickly. So with Anakin, if you can get him to be a little bit healthier, a little bit thicker, it goes a long way. And Relicate is a great way to do that. But the big thing for him is just the boosted damage. I mean, the dude is it, he just deals so much damage, right? We love, he loves damage, right? It's, you know, his favorite thing in the world. Um, I'm a big believer in it, man. Like, if you can get him to relicate, obviously the ship gets better. But both of these teams increase in a lot of value. And honestly, with Keller and Beck, and you put him in that Qui-Gon Jinn team, and all of a sudden, that Qui-Gon Jinn team potentially holding for more than just a single battle. And with a relicate Anakin, I think that's a much greater possibility. So, that's kind of why I really like him at relicate. I think he opens up that possibility with, like... This would be a Relic 8 you do. Hey, you got Keller and back. He's at the Relic level you need. Maybe time to circle back at Anakin. I think that makes that Qui-Gon Jinn team significantly better. All right, Baby Tano is next. And a lot of people are not going to like this because they're going to say, oh, Kenobi's better, Commander Tano's better. I mean, I would, you could make that case. Like, I think you'd have to make that case that like they're both very good Relic 8s. But the reason why Baby Tano is a really solid Relic 8 Obviously, she has her ship, but it's because, you know, again, she's going to gain mastery, which is great. You know, health, critical damage, damage, armor, right? She gains some really good stats. But the other thing that she's going to gain from her mastery, right, is all the critical chance, critical damage. Well, think about her unique. If the ally leader is Galactic Republic, Ahsoka is called to assist whenever a Galactic Republic ally uses a special ability. Think about that Kenobi team. She's constantly getting called to assist. So if you can get her to deal more damage every single time she assists, I mean, you're talking some crazy, crazy things. And in Kenobi's kit already, right? He's like 
calling the weakest ally to assist all the time. Pretty sure it's in here somewhere. Where is it at? I know you're in here somewhere. I know you're in here somewhere. Yes. Whenever Galactic Republic ally attacks out of turn, Galactic Republic allies gain this and call the weakest other light side ally to assist, dealing 20% damage limit once per turn. Well, it's almost always going to be Ahsoka Tano, so she's constantly assisting. So by ramping her damage from Relic 8, number one, you're making her a lot more, have a lot more health, which makes her harder to kill. But more than that, I think it's allowing her to put out more damage, especially in some of those fights where, you know, you're going up against the Jabba's and the Lord Vader's where the, you know, the little bit of damage she deals over the span of a couple of minutes does make a difference. So I'm a big fan of Baby Tano to Relic 8. Again, underrated. Just, it seemed like a lot more players, you know, Commander Tano, Jedi Master Kenobi, and then you see Baby Tano at like Relic 5, and I'm like, what are you doing? Last one here. So this one was interesting, and it's Dash Rendar. Now, similar to the situation with Anakin, I think you're going to want Dash Rendar to Relic 8 after you get Hondo. The reason for that is because Hondo is going to allow you to change the way you mod Dash. Pre-Hondo, you often want Dash to be super, super fast, right? He, he's he got a really high base speed as it is, but oftentimes before you get Hondo, you just need Dash Rendar to be fast to get out those opening plays right away, right? He's got his AoE, you know, we want him to get that out there, get those opening plays, get, you know, juice turn meter for the team. But with Hondo, he has this ability to remove 20% turn meter from all enemies at the start. And remember, in his, I think it's this one. Um, yeah, in Grand Arena, Hondo starts the encounter for with 25% turn meter for each other scoundrel or smuggler ally. Right? So he gains 100% turn meter in 5v5 GAC. 50% turn meter in 3v3. So this ability is so freaking good, right? This juices your dash team and it allows you to mod dash Rendar for offense. So now your dash doesn't need as much speed. He's modded for offense, which means that his this AOE ability does so much more. And I've seen it where this combined with Hondo will just delete the enemy team where he will just absolutely wipe them out in one AoE because at Relic 8, he's gotten all that extra damage and stuff because he doesn't have a ton of damage to start with. But with all the juicing that he's going to get, and again, he's gaining a lot of critical damage, which is nice. So it does make a big difference to him in having that extra offense from Relic 8, the extra critical damage. But another area that I really like with Dash is he gains a ton of dodge and deflection chance. He goes up to 21% dodge and deflection. Those are some pretty good stats, right? Like it doesn't sound like a lot until you think that 20% means one in five. And if he dodges at the right time, makes that fight a lot more challenging for people to deal with. It means you need a lot more accuracy, which you're forcing additional relic levels from your opponent. And that gives Dash time to react. So I really do like that Relic 8. He does have a ship. He doesn't need the Relic 8 there. But I think it's one that you do this when you get Hondo. And it allows your Dash to kind of lose those speed mods. Can put them elsewhere. So guys, that's my list of underrated Relic 8s. Again, these are not Relic 8s. Like I would not do Ahsoka before you do Commander Tano. I would not do, you know, General Grievous before like you know, a, a galactic legend, but they're underrated. They're undervalued. I feel that there should be more of them than there are in the game. So let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with this list? Are there somewhere you're like, Phil, you're a moron. Never do this again. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys again, like subscribe, comment. I love you all. May the force be with you and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.